Israel Key's family stepped out of their van and filed into the funeral home before the service today. His mother, four sisters, and their husbands attended. Key's six other siblings and former Colville neighbors never made it. I'm sure just the infamy surrounding the whole event is, would greatly discourage those that would have come. The family's pastor, Jake Gardner, never met Keyes, but has known the family for three years. They made the trip from Texas and organized the service in Deer Park because Keyes spent 14 years of his life near here. The Anchorage Daily News reports Keyes was starting to give detectives details of who he killed in Washington state before he committed suicide. Investigators, both locally and nationally, are now digging up unsolved murder cases to see if there's a link to Keyes. Gardner said the family did not know of Key's crimes, but one sister tried to save him spiritually when he visited in March. Holding back tears as she's pleading with him, and he, she said even he was holding back tears, tears welling up, said, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the depths of darkness that I've gone to. You don't know what I've done. Keyes committed suicide December 2nd in his jail cell, and his body has been released to his mother and sisters. The pastor says the family is religious and forgiving, but doesn't have hope for Key's soul. He's not in a better place. We do not believe that. Detectives, detectives believe that Keyes may be responsible for close to a dozen murders. The FBI is asking people who may have seen Keyes in the past to contact them as they try to determine how many more victims he may have had. Ian Cole, KXY4 HD News. Welcome back to the Top Much Documentaries YouTube channel. Today's Israel Keys video is going to be about Israel's funeral. Hope you enjoy. On the 2nd of December 2012 at 6am, Israel Keys was found deceased in his jail cell. The cause of death was quickly determined to have been suicide. All law enforcement connected to the case were notified of this, including agents who had interviewed him and the US Marshals. They responded to the Anchorage jail shortly thereafter and the medical examiners removed Israel's body from the cell. The Texas Rangers were informed of Israel's death and urged to notify next of kin as soon as possible, specifically Israel's mother who lived in Wells, Texas. Israel Keyes' mother was notified of his death on December the 2nd of 2012. At 11.45am a trooper arrived at her residence in Wells, Texas. Upon being told the news, she put her head down and asked if she could pray for a moment. She walked over to the corner of the room and stood silently, facing down for a few minutes. Around this time, the neighbours living next door arrived at her residence to console and comfort her. They were all part of her church group. The full details of Israel's death had not been shared with the trooper at this time, so he gave her the contact details of a US Marshal, whom she could reach out to for more information. On Sunday, December 9th of 2012, Israel's funeral service would be held in Deer Park, Washington State. The participants included some of his family and members of the Church of Wells who had driven from Texas. The service was held by Pastor Jake Gardner. He openly spoke on who Israel truly was, a serial killer. Do I believe this man is in heaven? No. Does his family that is present believe that this man is in heaven? No. Jake Gardner never met with Israel face to face, but he was familiar with Israel's family and members of the Church of Wells. And that's why he was chosen to lead the service. Jake spoke on everyone having attempted to save Israel, and this all occurred in Texas during his trips in February and March, but this proved to be futile. One of his conversations mentioned at the funeral was this, It doesn't matter what you've done Israel, God can forgive you. It doesn't matter, we love you Israel. Fighting back tears, Israel responded, You don't know what I've done. You don't know the depths of darkness that I've been to. I have to drink every day to forget about it. You don't understand. Jake then went on to say that whenever his family or church members tried to make Israel denounce his atheism, he would not listen, he wouldn't repent. They'd been trying to save him and a few of his other brothers for over a year, beginning sometime in June 2011. Another event raised at the service was when one of Israel's sisters had spoken to Israel about her religious beliefs and proof of this as they walked through the woods. Israel broke down crying on hearing her testimony of the grace of God. Still, he maintained his atheism and would not repent. Jake also told the story of Israel's behaviour at his sister's wedding. Israel became mad once members of the Church of Wells attempted to speak to him about converting. He made the comment that not everybody has morals like you. He was a murderer in his heart. Israel then burst into tears at the wedding and rested his head on his uncle's chest. Later on, Israel took a smoke break 
and was told by one of the church members that everyone just wanted him to be saved. Israel didn't approve of this and he didn't listen. At the end of the service, Jake said that Israel's life was all a lie. This man was not only a murderer of others, but a murderer of himself last of all. God is going to judge him and others like him. Washington State should be mourning the loss of innocent blood, rather than rejoicing, celebrating abominations in the streets. This nation is asleep. Have mercy. Israel's funeral may have helped his family find a level of closure from his criminal actions. He was gone now and the world wasn't going to show him any mercy. Israel's girlfriend, daughter and his daughter's mother were not in attendance. It's easy to see why given the situation. Hopefully his partner, former partner and especially his daughter found a way to grieve in their own way. After all, they hadn't experienced the serial killer that society had been exposed to. Israel's funeral likely didn't provide any closure for his victims' families. Sure, he was dead, but he had dodged lifelong punishment and consequence. Ultimately, the families of his victims would have to find their own resolutions to deal with the feelings of injustice, loss and pain that they endured and continue to contend with every day. Hopefully, all parties involved can find the solution to dealing with the pain stemming from Israel Keys and his life of chaos. Israel was eventually cremated shortly after his funeral and his ashes were returned to Washington State. They were scattered in Washington State, a state in which he claimed to have murdered the vast majority of his victims. This has been the Israel Keys video on Israel's funeral. As always, thank you for watching.